Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and this is a tropical cyclone information heavy update but we're going to be talking about severe thunderstorms as well with a couple of chances arising today and tomorrow in New South Wales and pockets of southwestern Queensland and also some severe thunderstorms this weekend that are now on the cards through parts of southeastern Queensland which will follow with some rainfall as well. Let's talk about those right now. So for southeastern Queensland our run of drier calmer conditions continues and you can see it's cloud free skies across the southeast today. There's I mean on this screen here it's about as blank as what the skies actually are. It really isn't that much uh, going on through southeastern Queensland, but pushing this over to the rainfall forecast here, you can see there's nothing in the way of storm activity around the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area. We will see a couple of thunderstorms, which I'll talk about in just a few moments, out in towards southwestern Queensland, fire up later this afternoon and this evening. Some of these could actually end up being quite severe with damaging wind gusts and heavy rainfall. We will also talk about a few severe thunderstorms as well, pushing over the border in towards the Thallon, St. George and Gundawindi area through tomorrow afternoon and evening, and Maybe a good storm or two out towards the west of Roma as well. But in terms of the Brisbane and the Gold Coast brisk, it is nada today and tomorrow. Friday is where chances do pipe up again a little bit through parts of southeastern Queensland. We really do have to stretch the definition of southeastern Queensland because we're talking about over the water ranges and then well inland out towards Gundawindi, Thallon and St. George. We could see one or two thunderstorms though into the scenic rim and then up into the Wyvernhoe outlook as well through the Lockyer Valley. But I don't really expect Friday to be any kind of high-end day at all and severe thunderstorms storm activity is just generally not expected on Friday. We don't have much in the way of uh, wind shear as well. There is a little bit of bulk wind shear pushing close to about 30 or 35 knots, which could get a thunderstorm or two off the ground and may turn it severe, but there's barely any instability through southeastern Queensland. And what this means here is that thunderstorms are going to have a very difficult time getting it themselves up into the sky. You can see Cape values like this are just not enough to cut the mustard, particularly at this time of the year through southeastern Queensland. The values are going to be a lot better though on Friday further inland and this outbreak further inland that I'll talk about in just a few moments is going to be quite mean. Saturday it's back to calmer conditions but we do see a bit of a build up of energy through southeastern Queensland. You can see those values getting up into the thousands in a few spots and this will all break on Sunday where we are expecting a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak to kick off through southeast Queensland. It's a bit of a wild card as to where the strongest thunderstorms are going to be on Sunday at this point in time and forecast models still don't exactly know where they're going to be but if we do see a bit of a trigger come through which might be from a southeasterly change riding up the New South Wales coastline again just throwing out possibly right now. We could see a strong thunderstorm or two further inland through parts of the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs. And over the last couple of days, Toowoomba and Warwick and adjacent communities have kind of screamed out to be the where the spot is going to be for the most significant thunderstorm activity if it does get itself going on Sunday in this part of Queensland. We will see a couple of thunderstorms, though this is pretty much a guarantee out in towards central Queensland here, out around Roma, Chinchilla, Injun and Taroom, pushing up towards Rolleston, Emerald, Jericho and Tambo. North of Charleville and Orcathella, we'll have our more outbreaks uh, outback style of thunderstorms up here so think of your high precipitation storm modes damaging wind gusts maybe a bit of hail in them but really nothing too crazy developing out here if we have a look at our convective sounding it's not overly favorable out in this part of Queensland you can see uh, the sounding is it's a very moist environment but there's barely any wind shear so really not that favorable at all and then into southeastern Queensland that wind shear does come up to around the 45 to 50 knot mark and there is still that humidity in the atmosphere with that blue line and that red line very close particularly up into the upper levels it looks like Sunday is coming together now to be not a high end day, but definitely a day for potential severe thunderstorm activity. Now there's no point in making preparations or plans right now around the storms on Sunday because it's five days away and things are likely to change. But it is now definitely a day to keep in the back of your head and anyone in Southeast Queensland, by extension, the Northeast of New South Wales as well, and pockets of the Sunshine Coast and potentially even the Capricornia coastline, watch this space closely. There may be some good thunderstorms in this area. We can pretty much lock in the thunderstorms though out in towards central Queensland. These, even though they're expected to be weaker, are more certain to occur. And again, at this time of year, we generally see some pretty active skies out in this part of Queensland. So we can lock in these storms out here, but for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, it's a bit too early to say for sure exactly what we're going to be dealing with. So I will keep you posted. Let's see if that satellite imagery wants to work for me right now. It does, and you can see it is clear skies through SEQLD. We've got a bit of cloud cover and a little bit of thunderstorm activity beginning to develop, and this is a precursor to the storms we're going to be seeing later today through New South Wales and into south central Queensland. Some strong thunderstorms are going to be a possibility out here in New South Wales. You may be dealing with a severe thunderstorm outbreak, particularly tomorrow with some much needed rainfall coming in for the central coast, but it could come in the form of violent severe thunderstorms in one or two spots. So the 
afternoon and this evening there's going to be a big a bit of a belt stretching from southwestern Queensland right into the New South Wales central coast just inland from Sydney actually uh, and Newcastle with our strongest severe thunderstorm activity forecast around the Tamworth area and then again outside of Charleville and Thargaminda. It's mostly going to be pulse thunderstorm activity maybe a multi-cell storm or two in place upscaling later in the night to a bit of a squall line out in towards central and central western Queensland and what upscaling means is where these pulse thunderstorms which are going to be sporadic and hit and miss in nature uh, slowly throughout the afternoon and the evening turn into lines of strong thunderstorms with damaging wind gusts and heavy rainfall as they move off towards the northeast. It's a very typical pattern for this time of the year and it's something that we see time and time again when forecasting severe thunderstorm outbreaks. Today is not a massively concerning day. We do have some good elements for severe thunderstorm activity but our instability is not anything crazy through New South Wales. We definitely could see a strong thunderstorm or two though around Tamworth and just north towards Narrabri and Inverell. This is going to be an area to watch today. As we push things out towards tomorrow, we will see a couple of stronger thunderstorms as well. You can see Thursday will bring a more gnarly severe thunderstorm outbreak, for lack of a better term. We will see some stronger thunderstorms through the central parts of New South Wales, and you can see some solid thunderstorm activity is forecast out here with these Cape Valleys pushing up into the 2500s. Now, if you've been watching my forecast updates over in southeastern Queensland, anything above 2000 means we're looking at a moderate to high end severe thunderstorm outbreak and getting close to 3000 in one or two spots. We're definitely talking getting up there towards high end. Coupling this with some high dew points as well, particularly for inland parts of New South Wales. These are some pretty good dew point values here through Thursday. It's a humid environment with lots of wind shear. We could be talking about some very powerful severe thunderstorm development, particularly along the dry line, which is going to be stretching from about Wanaring and White Cliffs into the northwest of New South Wales, through Coba and then down towards Griffith, with strong thunderstorm activity expected in this black outline here. This will include Orange Dubber, but especially out towards Parks and Coba. We'll also see some strong thunderstorm activity in the usual spots towards the north of Tamworth. We may be talking about some giant hailers up here as well. So thinking of our supercell thunderstorms that could be producing hailstones between three to six centimetres in diameter. Definitely some big stuff is expected out there. And then pulse thunderstorms again of that outback variety with damaging wind gusts and moderate to heavy rainfall are on the forecast towards west of Roma, out towards Charleville in central Queensland. And this is all driven by moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean, which is going to translate to rainfall with a couple of embedded storms across the New South Wales central coastline, extending north from the Illawarra coastline through Sydney up into the Hunter and then adjacent to the uh, uh, mid-north coast in towards the Taree area. We do have some significant fires burning through this part of New South Wales. I believe they are starting to become under, uh, under control, but I haven't actually looked this morning, so a little bit of help in the comments would be much appreciated. But we do have some fire activity up here, and this rainfall would be very, very welcome indeed. And seeing this on the forecast, and some of the numbers that are being thrown out as well, I mean, our forecast models are sparing no expense on this rainfall forecast here, with a couple of drops expected to be between 25 to 60 millimetres, and maybe even one or two locations picking up closer to 70 or even 80 millimetres and on this forecast here getting closer to 100 millimetres but for the most part it is in Sydney. I normally take those forecasts with a heavy pinch of salt, sorry for the screen flashing around here. I do take these predictions normally with a heavy pinch of salt so we will keep an eye on these uh, but definitely expect some rainfall accumulations between 20 to 40 millimetres stretching south from Coffs Harbour down to I would say maybe bigger on the southern parts of the New South Wales uh, Illawarra coastline and this will include Sydney and uh, Wollongong and also Newcastle as well and some of those badly impacted communities from the fires will be looking at at least 10 millimetres, probably getting closer to 20 or even 25 millimetres coming through for those areas. It's not much but remember every little bit counts. Good thunderstorms also on the forecast now over the border in towards Victoria. We could be seeing a nasty severe thunderstorm outbreak around the Albury area tomorrow afternoon and evening so this is definitely going to be some, a bit of a feature to keep an eye on and these thunderstorms as well actually head right out to this weekend. Saturday is also looking like another high end outbreak day for a few locations in towards New South Wales as we see low pressure colliding with high pressure. Interesting times for New South Wales. They do normally see some pretty stormy conditions at this time of the year, but to see it this stormy definitely is quite interesting and has caught my attention. That's the shrine. I'm not normally a fan of uh, out of the tropics thunderstorms. Um, so very interesting indeed. Definitely has got me interested. Now I've had word up in far north Queensland that that southeasterly air is really blowing through this morning. We do have some stronger wind observations, 22 knots out here in the Coral Sea. That's getting close to 40 kilometers an hour and when we start to see these winds gusting getting between 40 to 60 kilometers an hour that southeasterly change really has kicked in and this spells rainfall for North Queensland. Whilst there's nothing in the way of substantial falls in the forecast we will be seeing a couple of showers pop up throughout the remainder of this week and falls between 10 to 25 millimeters are possible through the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest. Cairns should see lighter falls around the 10 millimeter mark. As we continue to push this out including the weekend dry conditions 
continue to build across far northern Queensland and right out into the Christmas period it is looking a little bit dry but we do begin to see an uptick in rainfall through a few spots as we get out towards the week before Christmas. You can see rainfall and shower activity a lot more widespread through the Coral Sea after the 20th of December and I definitely am not writing off a bit of a rainfall event developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria which may kick up rainfall accumulations through parts of the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest which I've circled in wrong order. But yeah, low pressure system in the Gulf of Carpentaria will translate to rainfall in northern Queensland. Definitely a feature that I want to be keeping close tabs on right now. And zooming out to include the remainder of the Coral Sea as well, we do have a bit of a tropical cyclone developing now on the forecast models. And that is all of that moisture here that's situated up over the Solomon Islands. You can see a lot of cloud activity now beginning to develop up here. And that's going to be tracking down towards Vanuatu where tropical cyclone genesis is now on the cards. It's going to be a bit of an interesting time ahead in regards to this tropical cyclone to see what it does do. I'm not expecting much from this system. Wind shear is very high once it does leave the Solomon Sea and it's only got about 48 hours left in the Solomon Sea to get its act together. But by tomorrow night into early Friday morning, we should be looking at a fully fledged tropical load developing towards the north of Vanuatu. That's going to slide down on Sunday and Sunday into Vanuatu, likely as a weak tropical cyclone, possibly as a strong tropical low. Moving through Vanuatu on Sunday as a category one strength system. And you can see here wind gusts are expected to be around the 70 to 90 kilometer an hour mark. In fact, in a few spots, they could be pushing closer to the 70 or 90 knots even. So it could actually get quite strong. Again, we do like to take these systems with a pinch of salt, particularly earlier on into the season once this low pressure system gets south of this line here, particularly once it starts interacting with the jet stream, they can actually start to behave like uh, subtropical cyclones, which means we have that center of low pressure and then towards the south of it, we've got these very strong winds aided by that jet stream, which means even though it only appears to be a category one on the pressure forecast here, 996 millibars, it can actually have some pretty strong wind gusts. Sustained winds around the 40 to 50 knots, gusts getting closer to 80 knots. Now for Vanuatu, if you are watching, first of all, hello, second of all, it might be time to begin preparations for this tropical cyclone. Expect gusts up to 60 or 70 knots at this point in time. That's getting close to 125 kilometers an hour. A lot of the newer places on Vanuatu, particularly into the capital city, Port Villa, are built for those types of winds, but it is an idea now to begin making these preparations. And also a boatload of rainfall is forecast to come through in quite a quick fashion, particularly ahead of the tropical cyclone on Saturday and Sunday into the afternoon. We're looking at rainfall accumulations ahead of the storm approaching 200 to 400 millimetres. So it is a good idea to prepare for that. In terms of this being a problem for Queensland though, there is really no threat right now. What this system is likely to do though is once it is around the Vanuatu area, it's going to be spinning out a lot of moisture here through the Pacific Ocean. We've seen that this week with thunderstorm activity into the uh, New South Wales coastline. These winds out of the Pacific Ocean are going to enhance and this may bring a couple of days of wet weather and thunderstorm activity between the 14th out to the 18th of December through parts of the uh, central Queensland coastline and potentially even into the southeast Queensland coastline. I can't make heads or tails of what exactly is expected right now because it could really be anywhere across the central Queensland coastline and a small variance in this tropical cyclone intensity could have some major ramifications for how much rainfall and storm activity we can expect. But at this point in time, an uptick in rainfall is most certainly possible around the 14th to the 18th of December, most likely Monday and Tuesday, the 15th and 16th respectively, but I will keep close close tabs on the situation, that's for sure. And you can see pushing this out, this never really becomes a major threat to the Australian mainland. Even if it does funnel some rainfall ashore, it's only gonna be a couple of hundred millimeters and it's not expected to cause flooding as a result. And just quickly for Western Australia, we also have a tropical cyclone beginning to develop out here, well offshore from Western Australia. In fact, we might have two systems beginning to develop. We still have that 10% chance here offshore from the Northern Territory. I still don't believe the view of Rheology has dropped it, but this system here is heading out towards the West and it's not expected to be any threat for the Northern Territory or the West Australian coastline. By this weekend, we're expecting to see tropical cyclone development begin. And by early next week, we are expecting a tropical cyclone to develop south of Indonesia. This system is then gonna head out into the graveyard well offshore from Western Australia. Keep in mind, we do have that high pressure ridge over the West Australian mainland that's gonna be pushing air out offshore from WA and the Northern Territory. And that's gonna be keeping the system well offshore from Western Australia. And I'll just put your mind at ease because I have seen a couple of forecasts referencing AI weather or whatever. I mean, all forecast models are built of supercomputer super AI, but uh, basically some of these forecast models are swinging the system in towards the West Australian coastline. They are forecast models with big time land biases, which means they drag systems into the land quite easily. But if this system does actually go for Western Australia at any point, it's gonna get killed off before it gets there. And that is because we've got high levels of wind shear pushing off from the West Australian mainland and a lot of dry air, as you would expect, before the monsoon does arrive. So it's not gonna make it, it's not gonna get to Western Australia at a 
significant in terms here. And even if at a worst case, absolutely highest and unlikely scenario, this system does turn for Western Australia, it's not going to make landfall as a powerful tropical cyclone. So for the Pilbara coastline, the Kimberley coastline, Darwin, the Northern Territory, do not prepare, do not worry. And if this system does take a turn for the worst, if the forecast does completely change into a complete 180 U-turn, I will be the first to let you know that at this point in time, that is exceedingly unlikely right now. So no need to be worrying about it at all. Another system well offshore from Western Australia that will head out towards the Southwest Indian Ocean. I don't expect that to be ever a problem either for the West Australian mainland. But again, we will keep close tabs on things and these systems, again, serve as excellent reminders so that we're now in tropical cyclone season. Things are going to begin developing and we need to make sure that we are prepared. So we will keep close tabs on the situation. Our Christmas weather forecast will come through tomorrow, uh, at least on this forecast modeling here, which I tend to trust a lot more than some of the longer range, more traditional long range forecast modeling. So stick around for that. We will touch on that in tomorrow morning's forecast update. But that is going to be it for me today. I do hope you've enjoyed this forecast update. A bit of a calmer one, a bit more of a relaxed one. If you have enjoyed that as well, then make sure you do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that is going to be all from me today. A massive thank you to our channel sponsors. The list is 300 strong and I'll catch you all next storm. Goodbye.